What's up, everyone? We are in lovely San Diego. Four amazing games. The team's taking down this huge setup where we had a great crowd for both days and awesome games. Redwoods took their first big game and then slipped in their second game to the Maryland Whipsnakes, and that was a early battle as we head to the end of the regular season for playoff spots as there's only six teams that get in this year, formerly seven out of eight. And then there were some other big moments. Atlas and the Cannons made their playoff position or cemented their playoff position as they fight for number one uh, in the Eastern Conference and that uh, elusive first round bye. Uh, a few other storylines, what caught your attention? I think what is catching my attention is that the home market strategy is really working. And I was incredibly surprised and happy that San Diego is now a lacrosse town. Um, and they really showed up. Um, and the crowd was loud. Rob Pinnell said that was one of the best yesterday, best home crowds ever played in front of. Uh, Andy Towers referenced it in, in his presser yesterday that it was tough environment for his team to play in. And it's really having an impact on the games. And it's working. And it's collecting more fans. And it's stickier. It's a better pro product on broadcast. Um, it was originally your idea, so shout out to you. Um, and it's just working, man. And so from the business side, I really love it. Yeah, I think I, th I was really surprised as well that the energy, like every fan here was a Redwoods fan. And that will only be matched by Boston and Denver. Salt and Lake we too, about, we'll see. I'm pumped to see. go to Salt we'll Lake. We'll see. The thing, though, is like it's okay to live in California having watched the PLL for five years and love the Water Dogs. Yeah. Like it seems to me that Californians turned in their jerseys, whatever it was that they were supporting, and are fully Redwoods fans. You could hear a pin drop when Maryland or Carolina scored. It's crazy. And that that was different. Again, that felt like a Boston crowd that's been conditioned over twenty years for the Cannons. It'll feel like the Outlaws crowd in Denver. Yeah. And I was uh I was really pleased with that. It was fun. Fifty three percent. I mean we don't have the tallies full tallies from today but as of yesterday 53 percent of the merch purchases were all redwoods gear right so it's it's definitely continuing to trend that way we have really good data um and i just love to see we knew that youth lacrosse in southern california was growing and so we assumed that there was going to be a fan base that was really growing here um and it was just incredible to see the turnout and then also the interesting thing about san diego is because it's so beautiful and the beaches here I met a ton of people that were traveling in from the West Coast. Yeah. Just took vacation. Yeah. They're like, I just took like half the week in off. San Diego. I'm vacationing around the PLL weekend in San Diego. So yeah. there's something, something interesting there, the thread to pull. So. Yeah. Well, I, I'll try to hit the stats right. I, I know uh, one of the, the states that people were sort of scratching their head on uh, was California because it is an emerging market that has struggled with pro lacrosse in the past versus, say, the Midwest or Texas and Florida that are other specific Northwest. And so when we uh, decided to bet on the California Redwoods uh, and bringing the Redwoods here to, to see this response uh, was one thing, but also to look at the continued trend of participants in this great state, 290 high school boys programs, over 10,000 high school or uh, youth uh, men, boys playing in the state, which is second to New York. So it's just a huge market for us. I can't wait to continue to bring the Redwoods here for home games. And uh, I'm sure with the three questions that we have coming up from fans that stuck around, we'll hit on it. Uh, but before that, we're going to bring on our, our first guest, uh, who is not a fan, who actually spoiled the party for the fans and Matt Rambo for the Maryland Whipsnakes. Let's get him on here. One of the OGs. I still remember my original conversations with Matt Rambo. A lot of those conversations were players with heart were hard and Rambo was he's a very loyal guy, so he was very loyal to the Charlotte Hounds and it took him a while to get over to the PLL, but ever since uh, when ever since he's been with us and he came over obviously at the beginning. But I always remember those early, early days of Rambo joining us and he's just a fixture in this in this league and then and then pro lacrosse. So I'm excited to sit down with him. Stars align for Rambo. He's now a Maryland Whip Snake, having played four years, won a tour time and national championships with Maryland Terrapins. Cool. So we got Matt Rambo here with us. 
What's up, guys? The legend just turned 30. Happy birthday, brother. Thank you. I'm getting old. Don't look an age over 21. Oh, yeah, right. You I do wish. stay young, man. I wish. How do you stay young? Playing lacrosse. <laughs> that's it, though, really. I mean, yeah. that's, I, I, I feel old now that I'm not playing as much. I feel that, you know, when people stop playing, they kind of stop moving their body as much. And not that I'm, like, crazy ripped or anything, but yeah. you stay young. You get to go out with all their young kids. I've been traveling with Levi, and he's a rookie. He's asking me questions like, helping him with his American number and setting up that stuff. So it's it's kind of good feeling like the old guy, but it keeps you young too because then you hear stories too and you're like, shit, when I was 22, that shit was awesome. There's so, uh, there's so much youthfulness in playing sports. It keeps us young. That's why they say athletes uh, die twice. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's because, what they say. Well, once yeah. you're in retire? Yeah, is that once you're in you retire and then when it ends. Yeah, just being around the team has been keeping me young, especially this team. We have so many rookies playing. I think we have like nine rookies, so just, you know, teaching them things. And they ask me so many questions, and it's good because when I was that age, I used to ask Chan and Chuck or Earhart and all those guys so many questions. So it feels good to answer the questions now. Does it feel like – because you were, what, two years into the MLL? Like you played for the Hounds for two years, and then you yeah, came over to the PLL? two years, and I came out of the PLL. For the first year in the PLL was your third year. Yeah. Does it feel like it's flown by? I mean, TJ was my roommate this year. Hecock – is usually my roommate he didn't travel this weekend but um tj you know he was just like i was like you know we only have three games left after this and he was like it goes by fast he's like didn't you used to have like 16 i was like yeah we should start in april but it still goes so fast and uh he was like yeah this is crazy that my rookie year is almost done already i'm like yeah so make the most of it be grateful and you know if you i told him you know if you sit out an injury ever like you'll you'll realize you know how grateful it is to be able to play this game um, it, it just sucks every year I've set out maybe like one game for an injury or whatever and, or broken hand or whatever but you know you just feel grateful when you're coming back and you're like damn I missed this so much and especially when the crowd's electric like today the crowd was sick yeah even they were against us but it was sick it's fun yeah you guys were uh, popping a lot of energy after goals because it's fun playing away it's good being the away team. It is when you score. You know, I know all the momentum goes to the off uh, the home team when you Everyone's score. Everyone's quiet. And then when you score, then it's like a pin drop in. Yeah, exactly. It was like 90% Redwoods today, and yeah. when Zed scored a couple of those at the end, everyone like you could hear like Zed stomping around. I'm like, damn, that's a that's a killer. Zed got into it. He yeah, Zed. Some f bombs. Oh, he dude, told he was so fired home. up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When Zed gets like that, it's hard to stop him. It's hard to stop him. And I told that I was just you know rapping with the guys. I'm like. Yeah, I think one of the defensemen was like, shit, I didn't even know if Zed had a shorty on him. I'm like, if this guy a shorty on him, there's a good chance. He's what too gets, big. What gets Zed fired up? You've been playing them for five years now? Uh, I think four now, four? four or five. Yeah. Someone hits him wrong. Uh, if someone talks shit to one of his teammates, like, he's so big and he's so, like, I think he's, like, he's a dad. He's two kids. He has stepkids. And, you know, he's a lot of nephews and cousins. So I think he's, like, a big, you know, protector of his family, too. So... Um, I think it's his instance to like get mad and take over. And today, like you saw firsthand, like, like give me the ball, get the hell out of my way. I'm going to the rack, and I'm like, I'm like screaming, at guys, don't set a pick. Let Zed go. Let he's Zed gonna go. body this dude. He's 250 pounds or 40 pounds. He's a monster. It, it feels really contrasting because he's such a soft-spoken, kind guy off the field. Nicest guy ever. People talking shit. That happens all the time. Yeah. But when Zed talks, everyone kind of goes, really? Yeah. And it's because he's so nice. Yeah, when he gets fired up or when he's when he starts talking shit, you're like. <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's like, yo, don't talk shit to him. He's the wrong guy to talk shit to. <laughs> talk about the, the game and how this was a huge win for you guys. Yeah. Given like sort of like the bottom of the table right now is – Philadelphia, California, you guys are in the playoffs, so they started tomorrow. Right. Um, what was sort of the sentiment in the locker room going into this? By the way, this Redwoods team that won yesterday. Uh, you know, Staggs, you know, he pretty much told us the fate's in our hands right now. It's not coming from the coach. It's not coming from anyone else or the fans. It's coming from you guys. You know, we can go as far as you guys want to go. So he's like, this is a playoff game. Every game now is a playoff game. Yeah. We put ourselves in that position. We had a lot of young guys, and last week maybe we could have got a W. Uh, a couple games we were looking back, and we're like, if we shot better, we're, we're playing really well. We're winning a lot of stats, maybe just like the shooting part, and uh, that's a lot on the offense. So I think a lot of our focus this week was like worrying about us. I know that's so cliche to say, but like worry about our shooting. Like shoot the fucking ball right, and it's going to be great. So we shot the ball better. We scored 18, and uh, we know down there that end we're, we're pretty solid down there. Krebs is playing good. Dunn is a really good leader. So 
our whole game plan was like it's a playoff game yeah. and we had a lot of energy i mean bodies were flying like you know roman like pushed some guy in the face maybe not yeah. punched just like pushed him like they were getting into <laughs> like us yeah, yeah it's like a face wash i mean <laughs> there was some you know the redwoods and us always have like a little history oh, it's like big time it's always big, it's always big time championship rematch. yeah it's always fun so there's a lot of stuff going on so uh it's playoff mentality for now on and we want to, you know, I think a lot of people look at it. I think you got to look at, like, the second half of se uh, the season for a lot of teams because that's when the best teams go. Like, we saw it a hundred times now with the chaos, like being two and eight and going to the championship. Yep. So you just got to end well. And, you know, the first weeks and so fast, these games, you know, it's 10 games and a little training camp. The season goes by so fast. So if you start too hot, you're like, you blow your gas. You want to be building up to it. So that was kind of our theme is, like, you know, go in there and, have that uh have some adversity and go win especially jake bernhardt such a good leader he's such a good leader yeah yeah like he came out of the second half and was like we've been in this position and we haven't had adversity and handled it well if we were up five if we can handle adversity they're gonna go on a run stop them at two or three and we're gonna be fine and that's we that did moment. it that's that moment and we and we stopped them at three and that was great for us how do you think about all the young guys on your team they play with a lot of composure yeah they have like sort of veteran IQ. So I'm curious where you think that comes from. If you look at, you know, sometimes the pace of this game can take over yeah. and guys start forcing the ball and they turn around and they're like, shit, like you, you've always played really disciplined. So you've got that. And then the other thing that a lot of these rookies don't quite understand is everything you're talking about, which is got to get into the playoffs. Playoff, this is the playoffs now for us. Because if you play in college, right. you have your conference tournament, you kind of like back your way in. Yeah. So speak to sort of the rookies on the team and their defense. Yeah, like a lot of rookies stepped up. TJ has been so great for us, and, you know, he's still learning. He's like and an adult in the world. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty old, too, for a rookie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like 25 or something. But, you know, you got some of them like Patra that might be like 22. Yeah. But uh, they're, they're, they're just composed. Like we throw them in. It's like you got to play, and you got to play with composure. Figure this stuff yeah. out right away. If you can't figure it out, like – we're going to have to put someone else in, but they figured it out. And, you know, they're asking so many questions. They're learning. But I think they understand. And I think a lot of the voices from, like, myself and Chan and Chuck yeah. on the offensive end or if Zed says something, they definitely listen. But it's more like, listen, it's been up and down. we got to hold the ball and get a possession because when we get our six on six, we're great. So that's that end. And then our defensive end, you know, we only really got, like, Ajax back there. And he's been so great locking down guys. So I think, you know, we – when you get thrown in the fire, you got to get yourself out. So, or you get thrown yourself in somewhere, you're like, I got to figure it out right away. So, they're, they got to, they had to figure it out right away, or they're gonna, you know, it could be like a couple of games and done. So, yeah. they've been doing great for us. Yeah, they've been doing better than what I expected. So that's what we need. And you got your homecoming weekend coming up. Hell so yeah. Speaking of the momentum, we've looked at teams that are going to be in the playoffs who took advantage of those double headers. Yeah. There's three left. Um, you guys are playing at Homewood Field. There's going to be a lot of black, red, and yellow there. Yeah, that must I've hurt. From the, I've already Homewood's heard from the not university. Pumped about it. <laughs> they're, not, they're not pleased with me. Yeah. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel great, man. Look, state flag. Coach Tillman it's was. Not, it's, it's, not a, it's not a University of Maryland team. Coach Tillman was flag. pumped about it. <laughs> well, he was pumped. Yeah. He was pumped. Yeah. I think he was just joking around I mean, about it's one, it. it's one and only. Yeah. You know, he'll be there. He'll be on the sideline. Yeah, he said he, he called me last week. He told me he was going to come. You guys fired up? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Have, you have a history of playing great at Homewood. Yeah, you. I like it. I like Homewood. Um, as an undergrad, now as a postgrad. As a postgrad. I, I mean, Homewood <laughs> is great. When I was playing at Maryland or yeah. if I'm playing for the Whip Sticks, the crowd sold out That's every tight. time. So. It's like everyone, even on the field, were like, I asked a couple of guys, like, uh, how was this doubleheader? And, you know, it's tough, but I was like, you know, a couple of guys, like, we're excited for home, but it's always yeah. fucking packed. Yeah, and there's a weird thing, too, where you guys actually stopped today and there's a force of momentum that yeah. you were stopping, where the team, contrary to what you might think because they're going to be tired on a back-to-back, -back, yeah. they actually win the second game yeah. more often than not. You can look at the cannons. and uh, So there's um, – there's this amazing sort of bit of energy that the teams get it's together knowing that they can go 2-0 and out of a weekend right. and leapfrog a 10 regular season. Game exactly. Season. And, like, our, I think our, you know, our identity right now is, like, get to the playoffs. Every game's a playoff game, so we can't focus on the second game right now. We're just focused on the first game because we legit have to win, like, two more games to get in the playoffs. So it's like, let's take these at a time. But yeah. we're really excited for this weekend. and. I know a lot of us, you know, a lot of film, a lot of, you know, recovery, a lot of going home from West Coast to East Coast. Yep. So should be a good week. We're the, excited. The uh, the last question for me is um, 
we had Coach Staggs join a PLL All Hands, I want to say last year, um, and we just wanted his advice as a two-time, you know, PLL champion. And he mentioned uh, at one part the relationship he has with you and that being special and okay. motivating him. What is so special about your relationship with you and Staggs? And do you think that that relationship is helpful for how your guys are able to always be competitive, always winning, and having that edge? Yeah, I think uh, I think me and Staggs, the relationship is awesome. I think when you look back at it, like he's been my only pro coach from the Charlotte Hounds and the Whips Things. We've been together for eight years, so yeah, we bump heads and we yell at each other, but that's out of love. You know, he, you know, when he goes down to Florida, he stops at Jack's Beach and stays for a day or two, and we we hang out and kick it. But you know, we have such a good relationship, and you know, a lot of times when you know stuff's not going right on the offense, and he looks at me not to be get the ball and go score, maybe be like be the vocal guy, and uh, you know tell the guys that maybe they'll listen to you more but you know he's been he helped me out so much with my game of just you know being healthy and taking care of myself and you know all field stuff with you know he's just a great mentor too role model he's had a great career from college all the way to the pros he's the man and you know after last week was super surreal when I didn't play and he called me and was like we need you there for your leadership and not even for you to go and have five and you know two and three or four and three he's like I need you there to be your leadership there and you know what, like my game's involved and I'm getting older, I'm 30. Like I'm not the guy that's going to take the ball and go score 100 times anymore, which is great, but I got to cut off ball now. I got to still go to the rack. I got to feed. So my game's evolving and it's, it's been pretty hard this year because we have like TJ, we have guys that can do other things now and he's been helping me a lot this long, uh, these lines, just like you got to learn how to do it and he's been helping me. He's been super positive, but at the same time, like he pushes me hard. Like he, it's some phone calls are not pleasant, but like, He'll call me back and be like, you know, I'm doing this to motivate you or I'm doing this to keep you motivated and keep you hungry. And uh, he's been great, especially after last year when I, you know, decided not to do the indoor stuff. And he thought it would be the best thing for me. And it, it was the best thing for me. And, uh, yeah, we talked a lot in the off season about just, like, keeping my mind right with lacrosse. And it actually made me love the game more, mm -hmm. taking a little break. So it was, it was awesome. Amazing, man. You had uh, RP3, your Team USA team, yeah. right? get above 600 points. I know, man. That was so great. I went up to him. I said, congrats. I yeah. fucking love him. Yeah. He's been great. USA guy. He was so great. We've won so many games on this field right here together. He's like an awesome, awesome guy. And, you know, even with Team USA, he's helped me out so much. And we rap about golf all the time and yeah. tell me to come up there, you know, in the off season. So he's been great. Um, you know, every time I see him out or whatever, he's like, he's one of my best friends around here. He's Consummate the boy. Veteran. Yeah. Yeah. Veteran. We text, we talk all the time. That USA connection, what you have, is just so special, and you've done it yeah. three times, right? Four times, and there's guys you see. There's just that connection is just a little bit different, just because you did something so hard, and it's such a sh short amount of time. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I think about RP3 and what he's building in his career. Listening to you talk about what you're building in your career. Yeah. We have a guy in the booth, Ryan Boyle, who transitioned really well yeah. from like being the guy to then being the leader, and then having a great season even when people counted him out because of age yeah i think you got a lot of goals and a lot of assists left in you i'm hoping to see you in philly as a philly boy long run but we got a long, long way from now until then long you got run. a home got field. Run. yeah you got a double header that's right and a big win coming out of cali hell yeah that's My all man. we needed one at a time appreciate thanks you. for having me on yeah. boys love appreciate you brother. brother all right guys Thank thanks you, cool all right we got ryan here take it away man what do you got all right so i wanted to ask you guys um so I'm from uh, NorCal, I'm from like the Bay Area, and I was wondering if it was a decision between putting this team, the Redwoods, uh, in San Diego or somewhere in like San Francisco, the Bay Area. Well, I would say remember, and the reason why we call them the California Redwoods is that they represent the entire state. And given that like this weekend, we're still touring, there's a real possibility the California Redwoods will play home games in NorCal. Right? And we have that same relationship even with the state of Maryland, with the Whipsnakes who are playing twice next week at Homewood Field. They could have a home weekend in a future year in D.C. So until we fully switch to a home and away model yeah. where that team is in that city playing eight home games every regular season venturing to the playoffs, consider this team, you know, the team of California, and you might see them in other spots in future years, though San Diego showed out and was pretty awesome. Yeah, dude, it was awesome. I loved how electric it all was. You guys set this up so well. I, yeah. Like, it felt like a home environment. I loved it. It was awesome. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, Paul nailed it. A lot of it's about venue selection and venue availability. Uh, this venue was great to work with, University of San Diego. 
right? And so if you have any leads on any good venues up north, uh, we'll talk after this, or maybe you have some ideas. But um, like Paul said, it represents all Californians, right? And we need to bond Southern and, and Northern California a little bit more. So we're here to do that, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I actually play at uh, Dominican University, the school up north. In, Hell yeah. Uh, uh, down in San Rafael. Um, we got a stadium. Now, I, look, nice. I love Bay Area uh, lacrosse. It's huge from a population standpoint, participation. we got a great high school programs coming out there in national rankings. San Diego has uh, a great population of lacrosse players, too. So, you know, we'll, we'll see as the league continues to grow year over year, even around expansion, number of games played. You might look at a near future where there are two home weekends per team. So then you might see one in Southern Cal and Northern Cal which kind of marries it more clearly for all the lacrosse fans in the state. Yeah. That's all stuff we're looking at. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Glad we could explain that. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, man. Appreciate you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Nice you, you guys are awesome. Thank you so down. much. Yeah. Safe travels back. Yeah, thank you. Okay, brother. Right, How you doing? Mike, I just met you. Yeah, good to see you. Paul, it's great to meet you. Great to meet you too, brother. Yeah. So is this my, my rig right the, here? That's your rake. Nice. And my, I know that talking close to the mic is always an issue. Am I, am I right here? You, must, you must have a podcast. You're a vet. Yeah, no, this is actually my first podcast appearance. So, okay. Yeah, thank you guys for giving me the chance to kind of spread my gospel. <laughs> Tell us about yourself and then ask us what you got. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Wes. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. I actually played for Coach Saint in college at Ohio Northern University. It was a brand new program when I got there. So 40 freshmen, you know, on the field, no problems there at all. Did you guys call him Coach Saint? We call him Coach Saint. It's so Unbelievable. funny. Unbelievable. Hearing Coach Nat is so weird. We all call him Coach Saint. Yeah. Coach Saint. I yeah. think you, you you chose the better word. Yeah, I think it's I think it's so much more. Fun I do to say like Laurent. Yes, yeah, and it's so funny because you know there's like Saint Laurent is like the you know designer brand, so you have freshmen calling him Saint Laurent that always caused a problem. Maybe an extra sprint here or there, but yeah, no, it's uh, so yeah. I played for him. <laughs> in why college. would he dislike that? I, why I, is one of the best brands in the world? I know, right? I think it's just you know he wants a different name for himself. I don't think he wants to be associated with the designer brand. I think he just wants to create his own name for himself. He's a little blue collar. Desi yeah. Designer brands, man, they're hard to uh, hard to pronounce, aren't they? They are. You know, they, I think that they they not only want to intentionally make the, maybe. Yeah, I think the price they want to make that inaccessible, but also pronunciations as well. Yeah, you know? like yeah. Premier versus Premier. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Like the British Premier. Some people mm -hmm. are starting to call us the Premier Lacrosse League. Ooh. Especially as we that? bring on. No, I like. Nice. Yeah. Especially if they're Brits. Oh yeah. Because then all of a sudden you're capturing a UK audience. Exactly. That's true. Yeah. As we head to the Olympics. We should just change mm -hmm. it. Maybe we should just change it. Premier. We should call it lacrosse. Eves. We Premier call League it Eves Lacrosse. Lacrosse League. Ooh. Premier League Lacrosse. Yeah. Like for a while it was like the Barclays Premier Premier yeah. League. Like, are you guys gonna attach like a brand name to it? Like, get a big bank behind it? Yeah. Like yeah. Like the it US be, Bank Premier League. It could be the wow. Eve Saint Laurent. Maybe. Mm. Lacrosse League. Sounds wow. like you've been in our BD meetings. Yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm big on ideas. I'm a big ideas guy. You know? yeah. <laughs> no, right. but yeah, so it's, I'm out here just because I had some teammates out here and, you know, I've tried to go out, like I went to Denver a couple summers ago to see some teammates and go see the weekend and Seattle as well. And wife's birthday was a couple of days ago. It was like Congrats, vacation, man. lacrosse, perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, what All right, you what's got for question, us? brother? Well, you know I was going to ask the Midwest question, but I heard that that's been talked about enough. So I'm you not going to Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, maybe add your own flavor to it. Yeah, I I, I, don't, I wonder if there is a new flavor. I, I guess, you know, I've been out to the just Columbus. Still just still livid. Just, yeah, I am. Just livid. Yeah, yeah, just fine. Heated. Yeah. yeah. It's all good. I'm, I get I'm it. I'm red hot, and it's not just the, the uh, sunburn. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> for me, it's that. I'm not as hot about this, but we can talk about it. Maybe yeah. lower the temperature. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, is it, was it a temperature thing? It's got to get its humidity. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no look, I mean. There is, there's like the 30,000 foot view, which is also, we have eight teams and we can't be everywhere. Yeah, exactly. And there's going to be, you know, really important markets to us on the outside looking in. Yeah. And we needed to, among a lot of things that we were assessing, both from a business, from a fan input, from a player, from a travel ops, we needed to make decisions around eight sort of regions, in some cases, states and cities inside of that, that also do our best of covering the map while also considering, you know, historicals in pro lacrosse, historicals from the PLL. Um, so that's the 30,000 foot. And then on the inside, I, look, we, we go to Minneapolis. We've been to Chicago. It's really difficult to find and build relationships with venues like these. Yeah, that's true. Um, and so we, we, frankly, like part of it, we weren't fully confident we were able to do that, mm -hmm. but, 
if you look at you know you got for us like we're only worth our weight in salt if we understand the history of the business of sport yeah. and historically it's be in new york chicago and la yeah. mm -hmm. that's where all the major brands are major transport it's where high viewership is on network so we definitely want to be in the midwest it's a matter of like aligning all of the stars such that we can confidently go there and not have to be there and unwind yeah. you know so it is it is on our short list as is i would say the pacific northwest yeah. mm -hmm. texas and florida yeah. Yeah. i mean nothing zero to add you nailed it it's hard it's hard yeah, I, mean, totally. I, I love the ohio machine mm -hmm. um i love the history like the chicago machine was before them i played at soldier field when i was with the boston cannons against yeah. the machine yeah yeah that's pretty sweet yeah i mean it's, it's a fantastic market we have a lot of our brand partners that are headquartered there totally yeah and we want to be there yeah it's just a matter of it's just a matter of when yeah right totally we just want to be thoughtful and mm -hmm. intentional this is the type of we're not a software company right right we can't like take a feature and a b test it we when we release something to the marketplace we want to make sure it's there to last, like Paul just talked mm -hmm. about. And so, obviously, that's part of this discussion and what we do with one-on-ones. We want to be having transparent conversations mm -hmm. with the fans. Um, and, you know, that'll allow us to continue to – they'll continue to understand the business. We'll continue to be educated what they want, right? And it's a, it's a conversation. Yeah. So. yeah, for sure. No, I think you answered that very clearly. Yeah, I mean, you guys are working with, you know, limited amount of capital and trying to change that, of course. And so I think it makes sense that you got to start with – where you got well i actually think i mean it's a fair assumption so i i, I don't think it's capital really? i think that it's mm -hmm. audience okay mm -hmm. i think at large mm -hmm. we're actually working with a small audience oh okay Just we're trying well, yeah. mm -hmm. lacrosse at large oh, okay fair enough right yeah. like mm -hmm. we, we you know we just finished the pitch to get it into the olympics in la 28 yeah. a year two years ago most of the countries that represent the board at the ioc have never even heard of lacrosse. True, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's outside of the U.S. Yeah. Inside mm -hmm. of the U.S., there's still fewer than half of our 50 states that have lacrosse sanctioned at the high school level. It's just a small audience. I actually think we're bench pressing uh, well beyond sort of our size to weight ratio. Sure, yeah. And we've got core fans like you that are spreading this and growing this with us. Yeah. But, you know, where MLL, our predecessor, screwed up, is that they try to grow too fast mm, yeah. and there's just not enough data in way of fans to support that growth. So that's what we're being hyper conscious of. That's where spring football has turned over in the past. You just, you spend too much. So it's not that we're, that we're, we're sort of like minimalists in our capital allocation. Yeah. It's we're actually trying to take uh, the most educated and realistic view on the audience today yeah. and see what we can do to make it much larger of an audience tomorrow yeah absolutely yeah and i guess my i mean that fully answers my question yeah. so appreciate that yeah i think it's, my, it's yeah, hard to, it's yeah. hard to take that haircut because yeah mm -hmm. I, I fucking love lacrosse yeah i've played it my whole life yeah i'm in a dream job right yeah you know and i still have to sit back and be like okay this is how many people love it like i do Versus how many people love basketball or, and soccer around the world? You're talking right. about billions yes. versus millions. Or why, or why are there people that love lacrosse that don't come and watch the PLL? That's yeah. something that we're trying to work on too. Because there's a lot of them that are. But it's like, why are we having to work people over? And yeah. that's something that we're focused yeah. on as well, right? Like, what's what's the objection? How do we handle that and move forward? Just winning lacrosse fans. Yeah, yeah just winning well, lacrosse yeah, fans. There's and, still meat on the bone with lacrosse fans. And to add to that, I think you guys have done a spectacular job of making it an experience for all ages. Where I think in the past... You would have it was it, the kids really loved it. Yes, families. The parents were were mostly there for yeah. the kids. It was all families. Yeah. Now we have a, we have twenty one over bar down section yeah. every weekend. You can Absolutely. go to. It's really and I think dope. you guys do On a good field. job. You guys do a great job of choosing venues that are accommodating to it. Like that, you know, I went to the Seattle one last year, and you know that minor league stadium was perfectly fit for it because they've got you know bars all around where you can go 100%. get some great beer enjoy the game cool you know cool separate sections you know where you can get you know the wristband and you know that you kind should, of stuff's great for the adults that want to go too. you should join our sales team dude yeah absolutely you're, yeah. you're selling I'll, it I'll switch you're selling from, it brother yeah i'm in roadway engineering but i'll switch to sales yeah, <laughs> yeah. no problem yeah. <laughs> love that yeah awesome thanks brother thanks, appreciate man. you appreciate it thank it's you dude you guys enjoyed great, great meeting yeah. you absolutely okay welcome thank you yeah you brought your stick 
Um, yes, yes. Um, boyfriend and I play lacrosse, backyard lacrosse, just two of us Sweet. catching, throwing, wall ball. Amazing. You yeah. live in the area or nearby? San Diego, or not San Diego, well, Orange County. Orange County. Yeah, so close awesome. enough. Yeah. So quickly tell us then about how you arrived here. We're halfway there. And then your question. Um, so 2019, obviously, PLL started. Uh, 2020 is when I got into it. COVID, you're one of the only sports that happened. I was like, okay, I love sports. I'm a sports girl. Let's watch this. Fantastic. Wow. Loved every single bit. And then, you know, Redwoods since then. And then when you guys announced the states, I was like, you guys got to be California. Like, hello, yeah, how can you not? <laughs> and California's like, yes. And then you guys announced San Diego. I was like, well, we have to go. Homecoming pass this weekend. Yeah. It's all four games. It's our first time seeing PLL in action. Because the only thing you guys had out here is the All-Star game, which is fun. Yeah. But this is, like, so excited to have, like, PLL in California, this coast. Yeah. Fantastic. Amazing. Absolutely phenomenal. Probably the, the most favored, most followed team of the bunch ended up in California as yeah. well, which was nice. <laughs> yeah, it is the biggest. Yeah. It is no, no one was mad that the Redwoods ended up in California. No. Put yeah, it definitely way. not biased at all. Yeah. So loved yeah, it. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Amazing. What yeah. you got for us? Oh, gosh. I mean, because I do want to know. You guys did the documentary when like PLO kind of first came, but just the dynamic. You're the face the talker, but you're the money guy. Like how the dynamic then was obviously you guys were still kind of figuring things out. Like how is it still now? Are there moments to where you guys still kind of butt heads or is it just you guys are now in sync in the last four or five years that you just kind of have each other's mindset and know what's in the best interest for the other or just in general like growing the game? You wanna go first? So it's a really good question. I'd say that it ebbs and flows um just the reality of it right stressful mm -hmm. um so we we butt heads but we also are always on the same page um i know that paul's always gonna have my back uh i know that uh he hopefully he knows i'm always gonna have his back um and so i think that in a situation when you're a founder and you're building a company um that's really important baseline and foundation because a large percentage of companies that fail fail because of a founder foul a fallout so I would never abandon Paul, even if we had like a massive blowout. Um, you know, look, I think that there's like competitive, there's competitive, not competitive, but there's competitive ideas and tensions that come from different um, uh, ideas and, and strengths. And so I think that Paul and I have different uh, skills we bring to the table, which is like a net benefit to the sport and to the league, which is really, really valuable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that can cause like friction because you're like, I see this one way and he sees it another mm -hmm. way. But like we're at the end, the place where you land like the good stuff's in the middle, truly like pretty much in everything in life, mm -hmm. right? It's never like one side. Or, it's always like this person said that, it said that. It's, the answer is the truth is somewhere in the middle. And I think that like, good ideas and good execution are usually in the middle. So I think because we have different brains, um, we have different genetic code that we're able to um, come to really good decisions that are that are like net positive. And we have to work through a lot of stuff um, when we want to get things done. Um, but I think it's I think it's a good mix and. I would describe it as, you know, a great partnership and I'm, and I'm lucky and I hope that, you know, if, if, if we're lucky enough, I'm lucky enough to still be at the PLL for a long time that, you know, Paul and I afterwards uh, continue to build businesses together. And then my sons, I just, I just had a second boy, are oh, able to build companies sense. together too. I think it's pretty special. I think, yeah, that it's, it's unique, which is why there's a documentary on it. <laughs> uh, like most athletes don't start leagues and those that are a part of either team ownership or, or leagues are typically like sort of the marketing engine or the mouthpiece of it. Um, and what makes this more complex is that actually not neither of us run We're running a sports business. I mean, perhaps like the closest thing to it was my camp and clinic business. But one of the reasons why maybe a number of investors turn the other way is that we didn't have sports operating pedigree. Um, and so inside of that is, you know, this notion that Mike manages the money, I manage the marketing and creative, but he actually loves to get into the creative. And I actually spend a lot of time on, on money and our sort of business. So I, it, you really like, I, th I think, from a from a narrative perspective, it's actually easier to present it as business guy, you know, marketing guy or face and money, um, 
And in the entertainment industry, you want to actually lean towards what's most easily digestible. But anything that is uh, complicated and long term, um, we have our unique strengths and we also uh, need to be good around, you know, every area. And so we're constantly challenging ourselves to improve and um, and it's not just us, it's the rest of the company. Like we've got over 100 full-time employees, but then on a game weekend you have 300 people because it's a seasonal business. So the, the connectivity met with the cohesion is, much, is not, not too different than you know, championship teams on the field where you can see the team that wins, they're just more cohesive in their offensive and defensive packages and the teams that lose, they're trying to occupy each other's space. I, I, I think um, what Paul said, when, you, when you're building a business as a founder and you're starting it from just like a, a spreadsheet or a PowerPoint, and then as it evolves and grows, founders can't be weak in a certain area. You have to like kind of know a little bit about everything. Obviously, you have your strengths and your parts of the company that you're responsible for. Like we divide up the company. I'm responsible for things. He's responsible for things. But that doesn't mean you don't cross over and then go deep on something, right? Like Paul will be on our sponsorship pitches even though sponsorship officially goes into me. Paul will, will like go run down sponsors, right? And he'll join a pitch and pitch is the front man, right? Um, there'll be like a media campaign we wanna run or idea and like I have to jump in and I wanna give my thoughts. So there's like, you know, that's I think one of the benefits of founding a company is you just get all these different skills and, and hopefully uh, that trans, I always tell like young people that wanna like do stuff in the early in their career, I'm like, Get like a corporate job first for one or two years, build corporate hygiene, and then you would join a startup because you just learn a bunch of different shit and you wear tons of different hats because people need Swiss Army knives. And then all of a sudden you can kind of go do whatever you want. So I think that's one of the benefits of this. I have a question for you. How did, uh, and then we'll, you, we probably all have to go, but um, what made you, when you were watching the games in 2020, you didn't know anything about lacrosse? Like why did you convert into a fan? What about it? Was, because you said it was the only thing on TV, but what about the game watching it got you? I mean, because you guys, you guys do say it's it is the fastest game on two feet, and it's just phenomenal between the offense, defense, midfielders, um, just the dynamics that all the players have between uh, short sticks, long poles. There's just so many different avenues within the game itself that even like the midfielders that can use a short stick and then transfer to a long stick. It's it does you don't see that anywhere. Like baseball, they have bats, same size bat. Hockey, same size sticks. You don't get that fun transition of you can utilize what you have to obviously to a different extent but it's phenomenal that you still have that aspect of you know onsides offsides defense attack but the midfielders that can switch maybe out sticks or do both sides of the field the goalies in general like I mean but the six by six net is just insane and they're just it, it's it's just phenomenal everything that it is people throwing the thing 100 miles an hour and it's it's just phenomenal yeah. it's fantastic well it's complex and, and, it's, and that's, it's really yeah, that's, artisanal, the, that's the best way to put it it's yeah, complex yeah, yeah. <laughs> and complex but it kind of ties back to what we were answering and that uh that that is what's amazing about it it's also what's challenging about mm -hmm. it well even yeah. bringing the the two-point line yeah. which is something that's universal yes right? and like Having a shot clock, universally understood. Mm -hmm. People go, okay, when is this going to end? Yes. When is this thing going to happen? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the psychology of a clock. It's like, you know, even if you don't know shit about lacrosse or soccer, mm -hmm. or I should say soccer, or basketball or football, you know that like when clock this clock to, mm -hmm. hits zero, which is in 10 seconds, <laughs> I'm going to see something. Unless it gets hit off the post or another uh, the, the other player on the other team, then it resets and you're, but I, we get to go again? Yeah. Like there's just, it's just keeps you on your toes yeah the whole time yeah cool i love that great to meet yeah. you chelsea yes, nice thank to you, meet you for you the questions thank you for sticking thank around. you so much for having me yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you. yes of course yeah, being a fan. oh my gosh Seriously. absolutely thanks for it's bringing the whole league to a completely different level all right those were incredible questions from those three fans um awesome interview with matt we could go on forever with him um and i'm excited to go to maryland this weekend our home right? Um, the state of Maryland means a lot to, uh, to us. Homewood is always amazing to us. The fans in Baltimore are incredible. It's, it's, it'll be exciting to see the Maryland Whip Snakes homecoming weekend. 
Um, and there's still a lot of the playoff picture to be crystallized. So big games coming up. Um, and I'm pumped to have our new inductees of the Pro Lacrosse Hall of Fame as well, which is going to be fantastic. So a lot going on that weekend. We got PLL Juniors Championship as well. So the first ever PLL Juniors Championship winner was the Philadelphia Water Dogs last year. We'll see who wins it this year. So a lot of cool things going on this coming weekend in Baltimore and in Maryland. Couldn't have said it better. We're going home. And uh, I can't wait to be at Homewood Field. I miss that place. See you guys there. there.